The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the September 17th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. How about we have an extraordinary one? Yep, let's have an extraordinary day. And the easy way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the good in every situation that gets tossed at us. Today, you and I, we're gonna go check on the situation of these markets. We're gonna go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. We'll go ahead and take a look at anything that you're looking at, try to assist you there. And if you can't call in, we've got you covered. Let those fingers do the walking. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Do it early, though. Just uh, with those internet service providers, you never know when the email's gonna come. And hate for you to go ahead and send in a question, wait, and then it comes at the end. And inside that subject, if you'd be good enough to put radio show question, that would help as well. Of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow off 50 points, S&P down two, NASDAQ 100 up four, Russell's off eight, semis are off one. Uh, so kind of flattish type of uh, markets out here. But the first request, we had a request that came in uh, at about 10 o'clock this morning. So that was when I was uh, filling in for Larry, who I believe is back tomorrow. But I've got another email that came in here asking about the same instrument, uh, per se. This one's coming in from Victor in Portland, Oregon. So let's just simply go straight to that uh, question. Of course, we've got plenty that we can look at. But of course, I want to be looking at what you want to look at. So let's go to uh, Victor. Victor writes in, hey, Steve, uh, thanks again for your help. Last month's profits paid for your yearly newsletter 10 times over. Well, I like that. I'm looking at uh, UNG as it runs into resistance in a leg D. It's OK. Sounds like a Basel uh, follower. And uh, running into the 200 period uh, moving average for short for shorting it using DGAZ for a pullback likely to fill the gap at 2180 in the UNG. What are my thoughts? So my thoughts are first, Victor, is ignore the gaps inside of UNG. Ignore them all together. So you've got the UNG. Now, the reason I say that is, well, probably be the following. Let's, let me do this real quickly here. Um, here, I want to pull this over. I want you to understand, and you probably do, but I, it's really maybe not you, but everybody else that would be out there. And I want you to understand that it's so important to understand, and I know I've used the word understand a couple of times, so shoot me, uh, but it's really important to know, to be knowledgeable about what is the underlying instrument inside of UNG. It is natural gas, but right now it's the it's two contracts. It's the October contract and the November contract. So it's October 19, it's November 19. They're about 50-50 share from a dollar standpoint. That is what's inside there. That being said, it's those two futures contract. These gaps inside of UNG are caused simply by catching up to what has transpired in the futures marketplace that may not have gaps. In fact, let's just simply go take a look at the uh, natural gas contract. So you got natural gas, you've got the uh, November and October. Let's use the um, October 1st, that's letter V, 19. I think I need to do an equals one on this one. So here's the natural gas contract. You'll wait to see the profiles that pop up. You're not gonna see any profiles that are of significance because price is well above the daily profiles that are out there. So that's what the October contract looks like and the November 
November contract is going to look like this. Now, the point that I want to make here is that you don't really see much in the way of a gap. You did have a slight gap. Uh, from the open on uh, Sunday out here, uh, but that actually was closed uh, today. So if your thoughts are, even though I might not have the right days, that prices in UNG are going to pull back to fill some type of gap out there, mm, that, that theory, do not subscribe to that theory. Do not pay attention to the SPY, the Q, the IWM, and the Russell 2000, and take a look at those gaps and believe that gaps are going to be filled. That is not the case out there because those, the underlying instrument is taking a look at what's going on in the futures marketplace out there. So, so that doesn't mean that it, it might not be a short, but with regard to your target, well, in your targeting a gap area, I don't think so. I think if you do that, I think if you do that and it happens, it's a coincidence. It's really about understanding the underlying instruments, which then takes us back to, hey, Steve, what are the underlying instruments doing? So for that, what we can do, because I've got the October natural gas contract representing 50% of what's inside the UNG, so we've got to see, is there a topping pattern? And what we have right now, Victor, is a resistance pattern, not a topping pattern. So as you mentioned, you did UNG, and you said that it was in wave D. I'm going to believe you. I, no reason for me to go back there, because my real focus for you is really not on DGAZ or UNG, but instead what's going on inside these futures contracts. Now, the natural gas futures contract for October, coming off of the uh, low out here from the trading day of August the 5th, if you do the wave count there, it's actually in wave number five, letter number E. Now, not that that's going to necessarily change your outcome, but you can see, therefore, if in fact UNG is in wave four, this is in wave five, all of UNG's cues are coming from this and, of course, the November contract. So is there a topping signal or pattern out there? Well, when it comes to wave counts, what Stevie would look for, he would look for wave number seven. That would be letter G, the market singing in the key of G. We're not there yet. What else would we look for? Well, we could look for a TD setup nine count pattern. Today is likely to be bar number seven. We know that if there's a high in that pattern, it's not going to occur on bar number seven. The valid pattern would be on bar number eight, nine, or 10. So what this would suggest to you, Victor, is with regard to your short trade, whatever vehicle you might use, today is not the day. You'd at least wait for tomorrow, maybe the following day, maybe the day after that out here. Now, granted, prices stalled where it should have, $2.71. That was established by the most recent breakdown in natural gas. Now, that re most recent breakdown, when I use the word recent, somebody might think like yesterday. No, I'm referring back to April in 2019. There were nine consecutive closes where the close of each bar was below the close of the bar four bars earlier. I know it sounds like a lot. It's really not that much when you break down that sentence, and it's relatively easy for you to monitor and to track. And we pay attention to those nine counts. One, because they can identify tops and bottoms. Two, because they offer us breakdown and breakout support and resistance levels out here. So price has made its way up to a resistance level. For me, that's not a good enough reason for you to short. A topping pattern in natural gas would, and we're not there yet. Even a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom, we're not there yet. So don't pay attention to the gaps in UNG. And I don't see a top just yet inside of natural gas. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading 
trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, inside the Tiger's Den, uh, John asked us if we could take a look at the Great British Pound. Now, John, the chart that I'm looking at uh, has a 15-minute delay. So, um, you know, you've got you've got the uh, live chart. I could go to the futures contract, but I was just going to stay with the uh, the currency pair uh, for the uh, time being. And because uh, sometimes the numbers can be different. So when we take a look at the currency pair, and what John is looking at doing is booking a, uh, a gain. I never have a problem with somebody booking a, a gain. That's a beautiful thing. That's the name of this game here, booking gains. Now, if we take a look at the 60-minute, 120 minute, five hour and daily time frame charts, here's what we know. You've got green shoots across the board. Uh, as you know, it's taken out a prior high. I know that's what you're also looking at out there. Uh, but at this stage here, everything is above resistance at least on the short-term time frames. On the daily time frame, uh, what price has done is it's moved up into the center area of the weekly profile. Now, the weekly profile center of its box is 1.2499. My and it's bearish in structure. So let's let's do this here for John. I'm not trying to impact his decision. Um, I just simply trying to provide him with the information uh, to go ahead and decide what it is that he wants to do out here. Now, what I want to first do is turn off price. Okay, there we go. And uh, that, that this works perfect. So, John, what I want you to notice is that this is a bearish structured weekly profile. So, you and I, we're just focusing in on the green lines right now. I don't want anybody else looking. And uh, get, uh, I'm just kidding. Now, the center line is closer to the top than it is to the bottom. So, it lets us know that between a buck and a quarter and buck 26, 
uh, this is where we have predominantly sellers that are lined up. But my experience is, if you can see a close above 124.99, not by a couple pips, but you know, a, a decent amount, what you should get out of there is that move to 126. So uh, you, you're looking at a at a current chart out here. You can see prices struggling where it should be a good reason to go ahead and take the profits, especially knowing that you're moving into a bearish structured profile out there. Um, uh, but again, maybe it's a trailing stop. Maybe you're taking some off because, uh, you, you know, I, look, again, I would say this, a close above that 1.2499 level, you're likely to get 1.263. Of course, with the uh, Fed coming out and, you know, you're, you're really not sure what kind of gyrations you're going to see during the first hour or so of trading out there. If I look at the daily time frame chart using Stevie's other tools, well, our price projection for a counter trend move inside of the uh, Great British Pound was 1.2523. And that's representative of the last time. That's the breakdown level on a daily basis established by those TD set up nine counts. Now, what we know is that the support level that was also established by a TD set up nine count at 1.2051 was tested and rejected twice out there, both on September 2nd and September 3rd. And uh, for somebody looking to get in on, on that trade, that was your signal that at least your back was up against the wall with regard to support. Because if price closed below support and it took the long position, you'd say, okay, something else may be going on. I'm out of here. There is an active TD setup nine count right before the breakdown level of 1.2523. Oftentimes, and I don't know what today's candle, I don't know where it's going to finish. That's the problem. But if it does close below 1.2523, oftentimes, not always, a significant portion when you get a pattern, a topping pattern such as this one that completes before the breakdown resistance level, that's a good indication of a uh, turn out there. So you asked for the data. Uh, you got uh, the data. Um, nice trade out there and uh, um, hope all that information assisted you with um, with what it is you want to do next. So thanks for asking and uh, writing in. Uh, let's take a look at the next question that has come in. Oh, this is great. So keep them coming, folks. Please keep them coming. Best for me to do an hour where I'm answering the exact questions that you want answered, providing you information, um, uh, you know, as to what the uh, markets are doing. So John here in Sarasota, he writes in and says, hey, Steve, is AEM Agnico Eagle, let's get the charts up here, is AEM and the rest of the gold stocks going higher soon? Hmm. Higher soon. Let's take a look at AEM. And let's take a look at AEM and let's see what it is that we know. Right now, price is below the daily box. It got below there a few days ago. Uh, that box level is 57.23. Both support, my apology, both the bottom and the center line of the box are at that same level, 57.23. So, John, the very first thing that needs to happen for AEM to go higher is old support, which has now turned into new resistance, must stop becoming new resistance. Meaning you need to see it close above 57.23. If it doesn't close above 57.23, uh, no, AEM on this chart would suggest to me and you that it's headed lower. Now, headed lower to where? Well, from a profile perspective, we just simply come back to the next level. The next higher level, that would be the weekly time frame. We can see it's trading within the profile, bullish structure of this profile. And this would suggest that price is headed to somewhere between 52.59 and 53.95. That's four bucks less than where we're trading right now. Inside the monthly time frame chart, we don't see anything here that looks uh, significant. But at this stage here, everything is pointing to a further pullback in Ignico Eagle as of 124 in the afternoon. By 4 o'clock, if it closes over the 57.23 level, well, then that's a different story, and there's at least a rally or counter-trend rally that could or should unfold, uh, taking you up to 60.32. Now, here's the problems. I'm just seeing these as I look over to my other charts. Let's look at the monthly time frame chart. The monthly time frame chart shows what? It shows that last month was bar nine of a TD setup at nine count. Now, what you and I know is that when a turn takes place, it can take place on bars eight, nine, or the bar following bar number nine. The last time on a monthly basis that a Nico Eagle made a TD setup nine count was the month of July back in 2016. 
There was a slightly higher high in August of 2016, but that set up the downside move. That set up the top. And what did price do? Price pulled all the way back to support, which happened to be the top of its monthly profile back then. And that was in the 3970 level. Eventually made its way down to the center line where both buyers and sellers were. That was a bullish structured box. And that's what held as support in the 3270 area. Now fast forward to where we're at. How is this going to play out? Last month is bar number nine. That count is already in there. Will this pattern repeat? Well, John, if this pattern repeats, then no, AEM isn't going higher anytime soon. Now, when I say anytime soon, maybe it makes a higher high in September. I don't know. It doesn't look that way because price is struggling just with the bottom of its profile out here, and you've got a valid topping pattern. And you've got a potential rose momentum indicator top on a monthly basis. That would be assuming that you get a bearish reversal candle, which we don't have as of 126 in the afternoon on September 17th. Well, we might on September 30th or whatever the end of the trading month is uh, from a trading day standpoint out here. This would suggest the market pulls back to 3512. That's at 5721 right now. So that's what the monthly chart is communicating to you and I. That's why we don't just rely only on our market profiles, but we use Stevie's other tools and data out there. We come back, let's take a look at the daily time frame chart out here. Even though it shows yesterday is day eight and today, which could be day nine, um, it's not a valid TD setup nine count bottom on the daily time frame. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at Ignico Eagle before we went to the uh, breakout there. And in taking a look at the daily time frame chart out here, what we can see is a key level of support broke uh, a couple weeks ago. That was 5863. Uh, this would suggest that its next move is to the uh, downside, which is 4985. Now, uh, AEM, along with the other mining equities, they're going to move directionally speaking, for the most part, uh, in the same direction as uh, gold out there. So really, the uh, in, in answering your question, John, the only way for us to truly answer that, we must take a look at how gold is trading, uh, and we must understand how gold is trading in all of the major currencies. So for example, right now, gold is lower in terms of uh, pounds and in terms of euros. It's higher in terms of yen and U.S. dollars. It means that everybody has not gotten the memo. And when some instrument, like gold, is going to move higher, everybody needs to have the memo. Otherwise, you've got one person that's a buyer, and we can clearly see who is the seller, so to speak, out here. Now, in the case of Goldilocks, the positive today uh, is that uh, there's a brand new profile that formed last week. Uh, it is a bullish structured profile. And here it looks like we may have a second day in a row with a close above $1,500. That's the center line of the box. And this says uh, you could easily see a move up to $1,530. 20. So as we come into the Fed meeting, and if we were just trying to gauge what are the likely response is for gold at that stage, right now we'd have to say prices held support. And what we ought to see is a move up to 153020. Now, what happens at 153020? That I don't know. Likewise, that's the likely outcome. Let's take a look at the unlikely outcome. The unlikely outcome is that you see a close below 1493.10 tomorrow. And if you see a close below that, then the answer to your question with regard to the mining equities is no. They're nowhere near going higher and instead will continue moving lower just as gold is. If it breaks through, nothing more bearish than a failed bullish pattern. And if we see a close below 1493.10, that tells us we're headed lower. Now, in the case of gold, the lower levels, I've got several of them. Let's just take that one step at a time. I just want to be able to provide John and Sarasota the key levels to be watching for, and I would say especially tomorrow. And I wouldn't want you to get freaked out about uh, AEM or the other mining equities moving higher, because if gold's going to move up to 1530.20, and I can't guarantee you that it is. That's a signal right now as 132. Of course, we'd like to know what the signal is tomorrow at 132, so we probably ought to take a look at that. Um, but at this stage here, I don't want you to get, uh, you know, the, the normal move, I'm telling you this a day and a half ahead of time as we speak, would be a move up to 1530 and then perhaps the sell from that point uh, forward out there. So that's uh, Stevie's take on what the charts are communicating to you and I about gold and AEM specifically. So, John, thanks so much for writing in. Hope that helps you out. Next question up. And uh, hey, I need, I need more. So please fire away your questions. Uh, Ray in Sarasota. Oh, great. Hey, Ray and John ought to get together. But Ray in Sarasota, he says, hey, I own Carbo Ceramics Inc. CRR is the ticker symbol. So let me actually get that going on my other charts out here. And we'll pull that over on our TAS market profile charts. There are three time frames daily, weekly, and monthly, which, by the way, all look very bullish. When I say that, I'm telling you that price is trading above resistance on the daily, weekly, and the monthly time frame. Let's finish reading Ray's question. Where do you think resistance support is for this current move? Okay, well, with regard to a profile standpoint, we can, we can just negate those. There's nothing out here for resistance and taking a look at the uh, and taking a look at those time frames. Sorry, I got a nice cube in my mouth. Wasn't intended to do that, but it slipped right in there. Now, here's the beauty. Take a look at this. Carbo Ceramics makes a bottom. Rose Momentum Indicator bottom. TD set up nine count bottom. Price clears its first level of resistance. That was a buck 27. Once you clear resistance, it tells you about a change in trend. More specifically, once you get above a place where price broke down, a change in trend. Specifically for that time frame, which is daily, price makes it above the other two levels of resistance, 242 out here. 
And so where's the next level? Well, let me have it drawn on the chart for us right now. Let's do that. And let's add an additional line. Let's add two lines out here just for the heck of it. And so we'll see that the next level of resistance out here is three and a quarter. Now, today's going to be day number eight of a TD setup nine count. That says, Ray, that it's very possible that today, tomorrow, or on uh, so Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, you could see a high. Watch that 324 level. If um, if we get the TD setup nine count and it's below that area, it's a cautionary sign, just like we took a look at the uh, Great British Pound chart out there. At a minimum, it would say to increase your stop, whatever that might be. So 324 in the daily and 459 would be your next levels of resistance. You just have to be careful about the potential TD setup nine count pattern uh, that is forming. All depends upon tomorrow's bar. The weekly time frame chart out here, which also had a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom, so that's a beautiful thing. Creating that nice morning star pattern. This has 364. I don't know what your time frame was when you were trading, so the daily may just be a bit of noise to you if you really focus on more of an interim or longer term trade out there. And then what that does is just says, okay, I want you to be able to be aware of a shorter term topping pattern coming from the daily chart and to prepare yourself for some kind of retracement. But here you've got a solid bottom on the weekly time frame. I don't know where you're in, but this says 364 is the breakdown resistance level for it. And then let's move to the monthly chart. What was the monthly chart doing or signaling to Ray in Sarasota? And for this, I think we probably need to pull it back a bit. And it too was making a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom signal. And here on the long haul is 942. So there's your Carbo Ceramics uh, review, both daily, weekly, and monthly. And I uh, hope that turns out to be a nice trade for you, uh, Ray. Thanks so much for writing in. Okay, so no other questions. Ah, the Tiger's Den. Ruby wants to take a look at uh, cattle. Um, so feeder cattle, live cattle, does that sound okay to you, Ruby? Um, uh, bum, 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 bum. I'm just looking here. So what I've got is the is I've got the uh, the October contract. Help me out here because I don't trade uh, cattle to know. I think that's the active contract out here. I'm going to go with yes and speak as if it is. And we're taking a look at live cattle out here. And hopefully this helps a ruby. But if it doesn't, she'll go ahead and type something in there and she'll 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 set me straight. But here's what we do know about the chart for uh, live cattle and for the specifically for the October contract out here. And what we can see is there's a brand new weekly profile formed this week out here. It's bullish in structure. And that would really say you want to see a price move above 98.56, a close above 98.56. Now, it's trading with inside the daily profile. And it's a fairly narrow range. When I say narrow range, I'm referring to 97.69 and 100.55 out there. So it's really just consolidating. Looks like it has a bottom. I don't know if I well I can try I can try um, let me see do I have live cattle on Stevie's other chart for October I don't bummer sorry about that uh, Ruby I'll try to get that over there just so we can look at it but at this stage here um, what this looks like to me is you got a consolidation between the price we talked about 97.69 100.55 above 100 bucks you're headed to 103.72 Steve Rhodes with TFNN I these eyes want to hear from you give us a call or send me an email steve at tfnn.com we'll be right back If you are in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, welcome back. Uh, so let's go to our next question out here, and uh, please keep them uh, keep them coming. Uh, this is from Tony in uh, Philly. Uh, Tony, thanks for taking the time to write in. Tony says, "Hi, Steve. Could you review XBI for me? Uh, I've been waiting for the price and red line to catch up on the uh, daily uh, time frame. Also, is this week nine of a TD nine count?" I'm looking uh, for an entry into he's going to trade uh, LABU off of the XBI chart out there. So let's first answer uh, Tony's uh, questions out there. I've been waiting for the price and the red line to catch up to each other. So what Tony must be looking at here is um, this chart here on a daily time frame. So, Tony, the first thing, and I, and I apologize, I, I'm, I don't mean to, 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 to critique or anything like that, but instead really to share. Um, so I don't, if it's the daily time frame, and it may not be, so we're going to go look at the daily and the weekly and the monthly uh, just to make sure. But as I take a look at the daily time frame, um, the current oscillator and change line is red. And so there's no reason for you to necessarily wait for price to come back there other than that that's a level of support. And maybe that's what you meant um, is you're just waiting for you view you're using Stevie's oscillator and change line as a place to buy. And so then I get it. And the reason why I bring that out is that when the line changes color and price is away from the line when that is happening, uh, we then wait for a, a test of that level out there. Um, and the, in essence, that didn't take place out here on August 3rd. The line changed from green to red, but at that very time, the candle was testing that area, and that was a bearish message out here. And of course, price continued to move lower. So, hey, as an entry point, no problem. Pulling back to support, that's one level of support. If you were thinking it was going to pull back there because the price I said had gotten to zero, that's not what I see on the daily time frame. Okay. No, uh, it is not a TD setup nine count. 
Uh, week nine. You said week nine. See, week nine is what you said. So now I got to go over to the weekly chart. But on the daily time frame chart, it is also only in day seven of a TD set of nine count. So what Tony said was weak. And, 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 uh, you know, all Tony had to do was sit me upside the head with a bat, which he did. Um, and so now let's go take a look at uh, uh, the weekly time frame. Now, in the case of the weekly time frame, same situation out here. Uh, by the way, the weekly time frame shows a TD set up nine count bottom and that formed three weeks ago so let's go over that let's take a look at this so here's the weekly chart so the week of here's what i want you to take a look at tony the week of july 19th was a close below the close four bars earlier one two three four here's the bar which is july 20 june 21st out there you can see the close versus the close of bar number one. That's why I got bar number one. And then each of those other weekly bars, they were successive closes where the close of that bar was below the close of the bar four bars earlier. Now what happens is, is uh, XBI, the week of September 6, makes bar number eight setting up that potential of a TD set up nine count. We don't know what the following bar will be. And it's doing that as price is approaching the level where it had broken out. So if you were looking at the weekly chart, what you would have wanted to have known was that the TD set up nine count to the upside, which began back in January of 2019, that is what set up your level of support or your breakout area, 76.84. Now, what was really interesting last week was it did form bar number nine, but bar number nine was below, was above bar number eight. Now, what I'm noticing here in the TD setup nine count, I can't verify it just yet, but I'll let you in on a little secret. This won't be a secret anymore. I'm noticing that when the TD setup nine count, it doesn't mean that the other patterns aren't valid, that there seems to be a stronger more reliable turn. And that's the thing I can't guarantee it just yet is more reliable. I'm gonna, working on some software to do some testing to see if what I see is the reality of what really takes place out there. You know, sometimes we see what we want to see. And I just kind of like to master probability, so to speak. It's how I came up with the 50-day exponential moving average just by doing lots of testing out there on the spot volatility index and what it means to the market, generally speaking, out here. So the mere fact that XBI made that lower low on the, uh, uh, made a higher low on bar number nine uh, is a strong move. And what this says to me, um, Tony, is that uh, we should see price make its way up to 87.70. At a minimum, 87.70, that becomes its resistance point. Let's just, for the heck of it, for blanks and giggles, you can fill in the blank out there. That's how we like to play this game. You fill in the blank. That way it keeps me, you know, honest, so to speak, out here. If we look at the monthly time frame chart. So the monthly time frame chart uh, forms a TD setup nine count top. Interestingly enough, bar number eight was the high. There was a little bit lower low back here in the month of July of 2018. Price then moves through one level of support. The breakout level support was 78.46. and makes its way down to the second level of breakout support, like to the T. And that T was $64.30 out there. So you had a couple different levels to be buying. This would say that price is likely headed to $88.99. So I think we've got a couple of uh, the 88s out there, uh, $87.70, $88.98. Looks like where price is headed to. Now, will the daily TD setup nine count give you a nine count and then a pullback maybe to Stevie's red line? Perhaps it will. Uh, longer term, so you've been watching this for a period of time. I don't know what that period of time is, but uh, make sure that you are, and, and it sounds like you were looking at the weekly chart, just like maybe your counts might not be uh, lined up and, you know, send me an email, I'll send you a copy of the weekly chart so you can go back and you can compare that to the work that you're doing out there, uh, maybe to assist you with your uh, trade. So, uh, Tony, uh, thanks for writing in. I hope that uh, that dissertation uh, helped out uh, with regard to your uh, thought process thought process out there. Okay, so no other questions, none in the Tiger's Den, and none here by email, and the phone lines are open. So what are we going to do next? What should we do next? First, let's go take a look at what's going on inside the market. Again, the mere fact that it's positive, S&P is basically flat, NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is really the one to watch out here. Kind of take our P's and Q's, and I don't even know what our P is out there, but take our P's and Q's, are from the NQ. And the NQ has been signaling to you and I that it wants higher price. 
higher price, unstoppable higher price. Now, I'm just being facetious about the unstoppable piece of it. The reason why I say that is because of that. You're looking at panel number two. And just look at the beauty of a consolidation pattern. If you and I were going to write the book on a consolidation, this is this is one of the charts we would use right now. And I don't know what the outcome is going to be. But if we were going to write the book, we'd say, here's your consolidation, the solid rectangular yellow box area. Beautiful consolidation. And then we would say, hey, you know what? If price breaks the consolidation to the upside or the downside, we know what the measured move is. It's equal to or greater than the consolidation. Because price broke out on September the 5th, that was our first indication that we might have a real break. Now, you don't really know if you have a real break out of a consolidation unless price comes back and tests the top of that consolidation. And that is exactly what happened on September 10th. It happened again on September 11th, and it happened again yesterday. It is telling you and I that this is a real break of the consolidation. Yes, there's resistance, 79.73, 80.54, and once it clears that, 82.15. That's the consolidation message of the NQ. I don't know how the markets are going to react tomorrow. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien will be hosting a special 60-minute live webinar Wednesday night for Gold Report subscribers titled, The Next Leg Up in Gold is $1,794, Find Out Why. In this 60-minute webinar, Tom will be discussing how the bond market moves the gold market, where the gold demand trends are coming from, how gold outperforms fiat currencies over time, how gold trades an average of $110 billion a day in value, along with many more topics. Subscribers to The Gold Report just closed out three positions in the last week for profits of 28%, 35%, and 51%. Now is a great time to sign up for The Gold Report. You don't want to miss out on the next big run in gold and gold equities. Sign up now for The Gold Report by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and get ready for Wednesday's live webinar with Tom O'Brien. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So no questions that are in uh, play right now. So why don't I just do this? Uh, uh, let me go back to, uh, so as I was getting ready to come on the air, logging into the uh, den and uh, getting my system all set, uh, um, I was writing some things in the den. I just caught the very end of Basil talking about gold and the dollar and, and so forth. And so here's a quarterly chart, uh, the top panel of the chart. And, and this is in preparation of what is to come, um, I would say, within the next uh, six months or so. What to be watching for. Uh, so um, here is a quarterly chart. The top panel is a Dow. The center panel is gold, and the bottom panel is the uh, dollar. Now, it's a line chart, quarterly basis. That means we're looking at quarterly closing prices out here. So I'm not looking at the daily. I'm not trying to get this exact to the T. I'm really just trying to prove a point out here because the point that I want to prove flies uh, square into the uh, face of what others have told you. And that's why I want to be able to share it with you. So use as your starting points where the intersection of this um, uh, vertical and horizontal line, so to speak, the blue line, the blue and the red, where they're meeting up. So if you take a look at the U.S. dollar index, which effectively bottomed during the first quarter of 2008 in the 7216 level on a quarterly closing basis, if you take a look at that compared to where it's priced right now at about 9776, it's been a uh, a 35% move higher. Now, of course, the Dow is substantially higher. I don't uh, actually, from that point uh, to about where we're at right now, it's been about an 83% move higher. And gold, by the way, if we take a look at the gold bottom along with the Dow, actually, I think for that, what I was using was right back here. Uh, no, I was using the 2008 low. I was using the 2008 out here with uh, lining up. And what we had was gold had a move of 129%. So in that same time period, the Dow was up 83%. Gold was up 129%. The U.S. dollar index was up. We're going to see this during that next big bull run in gold and the stock market and the U.S. dollar all moving higher at the same time. This is the game in town, folks, right here in the good old U.S. of A. Hey, have a great day.